This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167. Okay, do we have Lance Lambert on the phone? Yes, sir. <laughs> and where are you? Are you where are you? You're like you're you're uh, you know the traveling man. Do, do, do. <laughs> where, where are you now? Oh, the country western songs, man. I miss those days. I am actually I'm still in SoCal. I'm uh, heading out to England this Wednesday uh, for a couple of great industry events out there. Autopot Summer Social in a little town called Piddington, and then on to a Product Earth Expo. Uh, which is closer to a town called Coventry. So uh, I will be calling you guys from the road, though. It's always exciting kind of doing those remotes. I think we've done one in, uh, gosh, for me, in Canada, out of Barcelona, um, all across America. So this will be fun taking you guys with me to the U.K. Do you have um, – you're so well-traveled, and, you know, with the com team and, and doing so much as, as a wonderful ambassador uh, to that company – um, do you like, do you sort of have a favorite place you travel to? Um, I do. I do. It's kind of weird and it might be a little cliche being in this industry, but man, I love Holland. There's something about the Netherlands and it's, it's not just Amsterdam in specific. It's just, uh, everything from the countryside to the city, the culture, uh, their mass transits on point. I just, uh, you know, I definitely love that place. I do like England. Both sides of my family are of English descent. So uh, there is kind of that soft spot there as well. Uh, but I'd say those are probably the two top. And many people are surprised. They'd expect Barcelona to be up there. But Barcelona is a little too laid back for uh, for my energy when it comes to business. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and listen, I know people who moved to Barcelona. And it's an amazing, amazing lifestyle there. But you, you sort of need money uh, before you get there. because. And listen, this is just from reports I've heard. Uh, it's not a very driven area. Yeah, there's just a lot of kind of siestas, a lot of kind of live on what you earn and you're not so focused on. I mean, they're, they're living really in the moment, which is nice, but not thinking a lot about future. And I might be stereotyping or generalizing, yeah. but I've I've definitely heard that that it is a very tough place to make it in business just because it's not uh, the economy isn't very driven from from all over the place. Correct. Yeah, it's just a little laid back. You know, people get to work around nine, ten o'clock to your point, take lunch and then a siesta for a few hours in the afternoon. Dinner is usually around nine or 10 o'clock at night till midnight. It's just, it's, it is really kind of a laid back. And I, I, uh, you know, definitely applaud them for being able to live in that lifestyle. But you know, when you're accustomed to growing up in the go, go, go and get stuff done, that whole manana, manana mentality is I say, it's a little challenging uh, for some. So the great place to visit. Hey, definitely. I get why the Romans and the Greeks and everyone else, you know, pass through that city. It definitely has a lot to offer. Uh, Lance Lambert, I'm surprised you didn't say anywhere in Mexico. I know that that's my favorite place to visit. I love Mexico. Uh, basically, I love guacamole and I love the avocados in Mexico. Uh, avocados a big commodity. Don't even joke. There's like drug trades now, like cartels doing avocado deals, yep. and that's a fact. Um, but uh, Mexico now is uh, apparently becoming the third country to legalize marijuana. Is that true? Man, they are on that path. And you know what? A lot of people don't know the history of Mexico. It has a very interesting past in respect to cannabis. Uh, this is the country that actually prohibited cannabis as far back as 1882 was when pro prohibition had started. And then they later on, you know, disallowed exportation by 1927 uh, during the 70s. Um, there was some craziness going on between the U.S. government and Mexico, where the U.S. government was spraying um, paraquat on cannabis fields in Mexico to try to eradicate the importation. Just so, some crazy history behind the scenes. Uh, but more recently, they actually decriminalized it in 2009. And so they do allow you know, small possessions of cannabis and other drugs, technically, in order to reduce uh, the illicit drug activity. That happened in 2009. And then 2015... Uh, there was a Supreme Court ruling that essentially said, um, you know, that we need to work on this. We need to prom promote and permit um, the growing and consumption from a safe standpoint, you know, from more of a medical uh, uh, kind of angle, if you will. Uh, and then that's what segued into the limited medical use legalization in 2017. But the big news was 2018, Halloween of last year, October 31st, the Supreme Court actually ruled that the law prohibiting recreational use of cannabis in Mexico was unconstitutional. That was huge for those of, in the, those of us in the industry, and it created a little domino effect, just like Canada legalizing and, and that kind of changing um, the mindset and mentality towards legalization of cannabis in Europe. When Mexico made that ruling that is unconstitutional, 
Israel actually keyed up on that and started moving in that direction. So hmm. there's some fun stuff. And now they're saying, yeah, we've got to move forward. We're giving you guys, you know, 90 days to sort this out, but we want to launch a full legal program in the country of Mexico. So they would technically be the third, to your point. One of the, one of the things that's not talked about that much, but we talk about it on the show a lot, is how organized crime is still really, really in charge of, of much of the, of the cannabis sales in Canada uh illegally of course and is that something that that you know mexico would would sort of face uh as a challenge as well yeah it it definitely is a challenge and it's something that uh several presidents have had to deal with over the years uh you know vicente fox which you you might have heard of in the news uh while you know he hasn't been the president for well over a decade down there um he's very much pro-cannabis he actually sits on the board of a company based out of canada uh, supporting legalization, but that he's is on Chiron, he's isn't he? Trying to do, yes. Is he, yep. is he a big part of Chiron? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's a very vocal individual. He's he's outspoken. Yep. I mean, he definitely. I've heard him speak, and I was so impressed with uh, his candor. I'll just say that to be politically correct, he very much called out uh, certain players in the U.S. and in Mexico on things that have been going wrong uh, in respect to fighting this "quote unquote" war on drugs with cannabis over the last few decades so uh, but yeah you know it's something that is a challenge they think it is going to put a bit of a uh, hindrance in the efforts for the cartel because just as we have what we call the emerald triangle in northern california they have something called the golden triangle down in mexico and that's where all the uh, cocaine methamphetamine and cannabis that is produced comes out of and it's kind of central mexico Uh, that's where they've had a huge challenge and you mentioned it just now you probably saw the same documentary as i did on that was the whole um, avocado industry, Todd. I mean, that the cartels have gotten into that, and they've started <laughs> essentially hitting up the farmers and holding them hostage in order to get a percentage of profits. Because when you're talking about anywhere from, uh, you know, between a loonie and toonie per avocado, because I know it's about the same here, a couple of bucks, I mean, that's a serious business in itself. So there's some, some craziness they're trying to get through down there, respectfully. Lance Lambert at 805 Lance, abovadainc.com, the uh, global leaders in two way humidity control. Is Arizona tea? Uh, are they getting into the cannabis market? Oh my gosh, I love this news. This was the most exciting news that came out of last week, in my opinion. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I know all dress shits are popular up there, but I can't speak to Arizona tea in Canada. I'm not sure if it's as popular there, but Arizona tea has really become a staple here in the States the last few decades. And it really is that go-to drink for the cannabis consumer. I don't, again, we don't mean to stereotype or generalize. Sure. But it's not that uncommon for you to see images in Instagram or Doobie where someone's rolling up a J or a split and they got an Arizona tea sitting there. So for them to partner up, In this industry, and they actually are collaborating with uh, Dixie Brand, which is a well-known producer of all kinds of edibles, gummies, uh, elixirs, you name it. Uh, They're out of Colorado, but yeah, they're actually, Dixie's going to be doing all the production and uh, essentially branding everything Arizona. And that's just another example of this industry going mainstream and really more people adopting and being open-minded to this to this plant, really. Well, the beverages is going to be huge in general, right? The sort of cannabis-infused beverages. Uh, and and are, are, will they be worth the hype? I think they will. You know, I have tried a few. I'm very impressed. One that I would mention is uh, Lagunitas is a uh, pretty popular, I guess it would probably still be categorized as a microbrew, possibly down here. But the owner has been very vocal. Lag, how do you spell it? How he supports Lagunitas. So, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. So, L-A. <laughs> <laughs> G-U-N-I-T-A-S. And uh, Lagunitas is a very reputable brand on the beer side. Uh, they actually were founded back in 1993 when we were, um, you know, still in school. But they're based out of Petaluma, California, which is uh, just south of the Emerald Triangle. So, really, their roots, where they're coming from, is right there at um, the starting point of some of the most popular cultivation of cannabis. But yes, uh, they have a line called uh, Hi-Fi. And so Hi-Fi Hops is a drink where they brew this beer, as you would traditionally, and then they extract all the alcohol, and they in turn infuse it with, uh, they have a one-to-one, which is five milligrams CBD, five milligrams THC, and then they have uh, one uh, just single 10 milligram THC as well. 
to try one of those. I mean, it tastes like a beer, but it has the effects of cannabis. And, and is that legal? That's you don't have that, that. Sorry to interrupt you, Lance. Is that legal to yeah. sell in in the states where cannabis is is legal? Is that is that how that works then? Yes, yes. So a majority of our states, not all, but of the thirty states, um, specifically the adult use or recreational markets, um, all of them do allow what we call concentrates. That's what it fall under. Uh, they do allow it. It does have to be sold at dispensaries. So this isn't something that you're going to come down uh, to L.A. and swing by a 7-Eleven or a Circle K and be able to purchase this. But uh, the fact that it is available, fairly reasonably priced. I mean, these drinks range anywhere from 4 or $5 up to, to $10 per drink. But then again, um, you know, the experiential side of it and the effects of it. Uh, you can't really compare it to a bottle of beer or a glass of wine. Of course, it's a little different. And is that the type of stuff now that Canada will start to see come into play with this sort of edible rule changing on October 17th? Yeah, you know, of the 10 provinces, there's some that are already speaking up. Uh, probably an obvious one you could think of is Quebec. So they have said that they are not interested in edibles and consumables in this fashion, unfortunately. Uh, but I do think that the populace will speak because as it does become more normalized and more accepted and mainstream, people are going to want to have uh, more conventional ways to consume. And I don't mean, you know, rolling a joint or smoking out of a pipe. A lot of us, quite honestly, are just too old for that. We, we don't have time for it. We don't think it's as healthy. So having elixirs and drinks and chews and mints, all these things are so much more conducive to today's lifestyle in general. And quite honestly, they're healthier. You're, you're not igniting it. It's being processed. Our GI tract uh, can process it much more efficiently um, from, again, a safety and health standpoint than uh, smoking. So uh, I think it's it, sound, it sounds sort of silly. Uh, it sounds sort of silly. But, you know, if you think about the things we drink, whether it be tomato juice or orange juice or apple juice, like really these are just all kind of plant based, you know, like grow from the ground, yep. grow off a tree. Uh it's it, it, it's it's when you start to think of it that way, it doesn't seem too dissimilar, other than of course the properties that you would get from it. Exactly true, and I'd even reference a more modern trend, which is the cider, and I don't mean alcoholic, but the uh, natural uh, cider drinks and the kombuchas. So kombuchas are huge. My, you're right. Yep. Yes. Yeah. One of my preferred is a ginger. Uh, I believe it's a ginger and ginseng or ginger and turmeric. Uh, formula that someone has down here with their kombucha. And I know the healthy attributes of, uh, again, that Eastern Western, you know, medicine or homeopathic medicine that comes out of those plant derivatives. So I agree. It's not that far off. It's just something that, again, has had a stigma associated with it, you know, for, for so many years. It's the only difference. Really interesting to see how, uh, well, obviously we see what the rollout's happening in the States, but as, as it all comes down uh, in, in Canada as well for the edibles, the consumables, and, and, and even topicals and things like that. Lance Lambert, just uh, before we go today, uh, as the 6 o'clock hour is approaching us, how's everything at BovaDaInc.com yeah. and any sort of quick company updates you'd like to give us uh, regarding them? Yeah, definitely. We've got uh, always got something going on, you know, as far as focus, uh, we're trying to uh, make sure that we still address, you know, the constant evolution of the industry here in the States and in Canada. That's really our core focus is North America, because quite honestly, our two countries are the leaders in that space. Uh, but having said that, there's still a lot going on overseas. You know, I've re referenced Teddy into the UK, but uh, we've got Luxembourg, which sounds like they're going to be uh, officially the first adult use uh, country over in Europe. And while it's a smaller country, it's fairly centrally located uh, in the EU. And right now, it looks like 2022 is when that's going to come into fruition. So that's some exciting news. We have that on our radar. Uh, but also, again, I've shared, you know, countries like France and Ireland that are launching medical programs. And we always want to support uh, where the medical movement is happening. So a lot happening over there as well. But yeah, we just, uh, we're keeping busy, constantly growing. And, and you know, of course, want to be everywhere flowers present. So always yeah, no, I, I mean, you guys are, are taking over the world one country at a time. It's uh, obviously very, very impressive. And then uh, and what are you doing? So in the UK, you're there for for how long now? Yeah, it's actually going to be 12 days. As you know, typically it's a day of travel both ways. 
Uh, so I'm going to be over there for uh, Auto Pot Summer Social, and that is actually uh, what they call a trade only or a B2B event. Uh, but it gets out a lot of the uh, genetics, a lot of the hydro growers, um, a lot of individuals that are now dipping into the medical industry. Uh, and then the other is, is Product Earth Expo, which Product Earth Expo is uh, this year partnering up with the Emerald Cup, which is a big uh, event that happens here in Northern California we've talked about before. So we think there's going to be a lot more international presence at that show, people coming from uh, not just North America, but also South America and across Europe as well. So both great events that we're looking forward to uh, coming out and supporting the industry for. Excellent, man. Well, that's great that we'll get to sort of do a a catch-up after, you know, you being there for five, six days, or I guess seven days uh, next week. And uh, really, I want to find out, uh, and I'm sure you'll learn a lot over this next week, uh, of of the more accepting views on cannabis in that part of the world, too, in the UK, which still sort of has a a long way to go as well. Uh, Lance, I love these chats, man. I really do. It's uh, I say it every week, week after week after week. But I always think of if there's a new listener, uh, Lance Lambert's one of the best. Uh, right from bovadinc.com, so knowledgeable in the space, uh, obviously presents himself so well. And uh, it's too bad I don't see him in studio much because uh, he's also uh, easy on the eyes too, you know what I mean? Hey, thanks, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Only a true friend would say that. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, handsome guy, you know. You're, you're, I, I know how athletic <laughs> you are and the bikes and, uh, you know, you're a good dad and you're always traveling. you got so much going for you. So, you know, you're a good catch. You know always, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. And I love to cook on top of all that. <laughs> oh, here you go. Now my wife's leaving me and you're coming for you. Okay, thanks, Lance. <laughs> uh, well, we should talk about infused cooking, too, what you can do, some recipes you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yep, definitely. That's gonna I don't be even know if I'm allowed to talk about that, but well, maybe we will. Okay, Lance, I got a boot. We got a news up break here. Thank you so much. Enjoy the UK. BovidaInc.com. Hashtag Bovida Cannabis. Again, they don't touch the plant, but they keep it fresh. This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167.